Well, they probably want you to say hello. Hello, Alan, John, all in middle here. Hello, Brian D. and a tune off here. Hello, it's Paul Hutter. Okay. Anita, can you hear it? Okay, thank you. Okay. Anita, can you hear it? Okay, thank you. So, Mr. Leggett, do you have anything you wish to add to the application? Um, no, I missed. I couldn't hear a word that was going on through the through the reading of the application. <laughs> so, uh, prov provided it went well with uh, with what okay. the planner explained, uh, I don't have anything to read. Really Can you hear it? Okay, thank you. Right. So, Mr. Leggett, do you have anything you wish to add to the application? Um, no, I missed. I couldn't hear a word that was going on through the through the reading of the application. So, 
uh, with what Perfect. the planner explained, uh, I don't have anything to read. Really Can you hear it? Oh boy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right. so Mr. Like it. Do you have it? Uh, Mr. Chair, could I ask a question? Um, there seems to be a lot of just, uh, um, I'm having difficulty hearing it um, on my computer. All right, um, the agent for A4622 is Adam Leggett. Uh, he is on the line. Do you have anything you wish to add to the report, Mr. Leggett? No, I don't. I think the planners got it pretty well wrapped up. It looks like Orca had responded and provided comments as well and uh, without concerns. So uh, the, I think we're pretty good on the, uh, how the report's been presented. Okay, thank you. And Deputy Clerk, there was no one that registered in opposition. Thank you. I'll bring it to committee. Are there any questions? Seeing none, we'll go on to A4722, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, application number A4722 for 242 Lauren Court. The application seeks relief to reduce the minimum five yard setback from 1.2 meters to 0.99 meters to a deck. This is to, to excuse me, to permit the construction of a 215 square foot open deck. We found that this application meets the four tests of the minor variance and recommend the application for approval. An archeological assessment is not warranted for this application. Agency comments were received from uh, ORCA uh, who submitted comments that a ORCA permit will be required as well as they recommend that uh, sedimentation and erosion control uh, be implemented where appropriate prior to, during, and after construction until all unstable soil is vegetated. Uh, we received comments from Kirk Lake First Nation advising that uh, no archaeological assessment is required as well, um, and no public comments were received uh, for this application. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Clerk, was there anyone that registered for or against this application? Uh, here for this application. Thank you very much. I'll bring it to committee. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to A4822, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. A4822 for 594 Rabbit Run Road seeks relief to reduce the high, uh, excuse me, the minimum high water setback from 30 meters to 16.62 meters to a dwelling. Also to reduce the maximum total lot coverage from 20% to 20.1% to increase it, as well to decrease the minimum required side yard setback from three meters to 1.43 meters. This is in order to permit the construction of a new 1,328 square foot cottage addition, which includes a 472 square foot covered porch on the front. Uh, we found that this application does meet the four tests of the minor variance and recommend it for approval. Uh, we do find uh, that this application does warrant the requirement for an archaeological assessment. Agency comments were received from ORCA, uh, who submitted comments that a planting plan would be required, as well as indicating that an ORCA permit will not be required for the project. Curve Lake First Nation submitted comments as well, advising that an archaeological assessment is required. We've also received public comments for this application, uh, first from Raymond and Frida Wolsack at 592 Rabbit Run Road. Um, their letter was objecting to the proposed variance, citing in summary, uh, concern impact to trees, change to the present conditions and the desirability of their cottage property. We also did receive an additional letter um, 
just prior to this meeting um, with further comments of concern in regard to, in regard to Lakeview sight lines and the roadside view, uh, as well as concerns about emergency access due to the side yard setback request. No further comments were received for this application. Mr. and Mrs. Turnhoff, do you have anything you wish to add to this report? Um, the first is that we have taken the first step for the archaeological assessment, and they did come out and do their initial uh, test for, like they did digging throughout the entire property and they haven't found anything. We're just waiting for the written report. And I don't even know if it's a for yet to say this, <laughs> but I'm going to say it. Um, the neighbors, Ray and Frida, are in their late 80s, and they probably spend two days a year at their property. It's a very derelict cottage that, in our opinion, is rather inhabitable, which is why they only stay there one night or two nights per year. It is the maximum we've ever seen them there in the five years that we've owned the property. So it's rather disheartening to us <laughs> to hear the number of objections and that they have any objection considering the length of time that they actually spent at that property. So whether that's appropriate or not to have said, that's the truth of it, so. All right, thank you. And then, excuse, I, excuse, I um, have, I also have uh, Lauren Wolzak. Lorene Wolzak, do you have anything you wish to say about this property? their original letter and you have on record the uh, the letter that was just sent through this evening. My apologies that it, uh, it has to be uh, sent in in that format, but it was last minute. We, we have had that property, rather my parents have had that property for a great many years. I, as long as I've lived on this, years. so 55 years they've had this property. So you, I'm sure everyone can imagine that one would not like to see anything change and one would not like to see a great big huge building right close to the property line right beside us, which is which is how we're receiving it. So <clears throat> um, we hope that everything is done properly and legally and, and all the rules are obeyed uh, with respect to how this, this addition and building is, is put up. Um, I'm not really sure what else to put in. Raymond, would you like to say anything? No. no. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. And I also understand there's a neighbor, Ella Allen Biddle, on the line. Do you have anything you wish to say about this application? <clears throat> nothing to add. No objections. Our... She said okay. she had nothing to add. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. I'll bring it to back to committee. Are there any comments or questions? Donna? Um, through you to um, Brandy, did you mention that there was somebody that had concern with emergency vehicle access? Because it isn't written here. I can't see it. Uh, yes, that uh, comment was in the additional letter received prior, just prior to this meeting from Mr. Uh, Raymond Rolsack, Rolsack, excuse me. And um, from looking at the site plan, can you see any issue with the access for emergency vehicles? 
In looking at the site plan, uh, we do not see a concern with emergency access. Uh, the uh, property is close to the sideline, close to the Wolsacks. However, there is still room on the other side of the proposed addition that would allow access to the rear yard. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions from the committee? Seeing none, we will move on to A4922, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> uh, application A4922 is for 487 Causeway View Road South. The application seeks to reduce the minimum high water setback from 30 meters to approximately 14 meters to an accessory structure, um, which is a detached garage. Uh, it also seeks to relieve uh, increase the maximum height of the accessory structure from four meters to 4.96 meters to midpoint, as well to increase the maximum total lot coverage of accessory structures from 5% to 7%. Uh, this is in order to permit the construction of a new 768 square foot detached garage. We found that this application meets the four tests of the minor variance and recommended for approval. Uh, we do find that the um, an archaeological assessment is warranted for this application should there be any soil disturbance or excavation. Um, comments received for this application were from the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority, um, who had comments uh, recommending that a pl planting plan be submitted, as well indicating that an ORCA permit will be required for this application. Uh, comments were received from Curve Lake First Nation as well, uh, advising that an archaeological assessment um, is required. Public comments uh, were not received. No further comment for this application. Thank you very much. Um, did anyone register to speak for or against this application? Thank you very much. I'll bring it to committee. Any questions? We'll move on to A5022, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. A50, this application seeks relief to decrease the minimum setback from the high water mark from 30 meters to 14.9 meters to a dwelling and from 30 meters to 13.3 meters to an open deck, as well to reduce the minimum required interior side yard setback from 3 meters to 2.5 meters. This is in order to permit the, permit the construction of a new 1,600 four square foot dwelling addition and a 267 square foot open deck. These variances were previously approved through township file A5421. However, an updated survey obtained since the previous approval has revealed that the setback distances and reliefs previously granted were slightly incorrect. Uh, we found that this application does meet the four tests of the minor variance and recommend the application for approval. An ar archaeological assessment is warranted should there be any further soil disturbance or excavation. Uh, public, or excuse me, comments received from agencies were from ORCA uh, advising that they recommend a planting plan as well that sedimentation and erosion control during construction um, should be monitored and indicating that or an ORCA permit will be required. Curve Lake First Nation also commented that an archaeological assessment would be required. No public comments were received for this application. Thank you very much. Um, I understand that the agent, Arnie Bowman, is on the line. Do you have anything you wish to add to the report? No, I um, support the report and... Uh... I uh, just am available to answer any questions, should there be some. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, did anyone register in opposition of this application? Uh, no others registered. Thank you very much. I'll bring it to committee. Andy? Yeah, uh, th through you, uh, Randy, the, uh, when you said there was a minor difference, how much are we talking about? Um, I believe it was a very minor difference. Um, Pair Planner, would you have a comment? Yeah, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, I believe the, uh, the the distance was a matter of, 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 of decimals to the uh, the setback from the high water mark. It's indicated in, through their new survey as 13.5 meters. I believe off the top of my head, the, the previous one was 14.6. So it's about another meter closer. Yeah, yeah. It's, 
But three, I, but, I'm just going off the top of my head. Okay, it's about three I, mean, and a half I may be over exaggerating it, but but it was within sort of a meter ish or less. Okay. So when we first approved it, we would have approved it on the basis that they weren't getting any closer to the high water mark. Did the new survey indicate that indeed they did get closer to the high water mark? Uh, through you, Matt. Matt. No, that's not my understanding. The, the survey was incorrect in showing the distance from the shoreline <clears> to, <throat> to the structure. Was, was what so it was that, the other that's way being around. corrected through this new survey? Okay, so, so the structure is not moving any closer to the shoreline, it's actually further away than, yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Bauman would like to make a further comment. Go ahead. The, the change from the original minor variance granted is 0.6 meters to, to the setback from the dwelling as well as from the deck. Um, <clears throat> there. There was an irregularity in the shoreline of 0.7 meters, an indent in towards the existing property. So um, the original minor variance was simply to replace what already existed at that distance from the property line. Unfortunately, when I had the surveyors come out to confirm the shoreline, there was a triangle 21 inches by 21 inches by 21 inches that jutted in towards uh, the building that nobody picked up on previously and that's the reason for uh, the 0.6 meters we're we're not moving the building any closer to the water line than what was previously intended it's just this irregularity in the shoreline was noted by the surveyors so the building's on the original envelope that they had intended, right? So, so Correct. The building is on the original oh. envelope that it was intended to be. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the clarification. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, we will move on to A5122, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. A5122 is for 41 George Street. Uh, the application seeks relief to... Re increase the maximum lot coverage from 30% to 32.3% for all buildings and structures, as well to reduce the minimum re required rear yard setback from 7.5 meters to four, excuse me, 6.46 meters. This is in order to permit the construction of a new 128 square foot covered front porch and to enclose an existing 183 square foot open deck and as a sunroof excuse me, sunroom. Uh, we found that this application does meet the four tests of the minor variance and recommend it for approval. Uh, we found that an archeological assessment is not warranted for this application. Agency comments were received from the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority uh, who had no comments of concern. Uh, however, uh, included a statement that an ORCA permit, excuse me, an ORCA permit is not required for this project. Curve Lake First Nation also submitted comments advising that an archaeological assessment is not required. Uh, we did receive public comments uh, from uh, Craig Nozielek at 43 George Street, as well as a Mark Wilford at 49 Clemente Street. Uh, both have submitted comments in opposition of this application. Um, no other, no further comments were received for this application. All right, thank you. And Deputy Clerk, did anyone register in favor or against this application? Uh, no others were registered. Thank you very much. We'll bring it to committee. Seeing no questions, we'll move on to A5222. Thank you, Madam Chair. A5222 is 523 Causeway View Road North. Um, this application uh, seeks relief to reduce the minimum high water setback from 30 meters to 16.9 meters to a dwelling, uh, to reduce the minimum required front yard setback from 7.5 meters to 5.72 meters to a dwelling, as well to increase the maximum total lot coverage from 20% to 22.4%. This is in order to permit the um, conversion of a 1,820 square foot existing one-story residential dwelling into a raised bed bungalow residential dwelling, as well the construction of a new 211 square foot covered front porch and a new 1,344 square foot attached garage. 
we do find that this application meets four tests of the minor variance and recommend it for approval. Uh, we do war uh, say that an archaeological assessment is warranted for this application. Uh, comments were received from the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority uh, recommending that a planting plan be provided, as well that sedimentation and erosion control uh, be done during construction, as well as indicating that an ORCA permit will be required. Curve Lake First Nation uh, submitted comments uh, advising that an archaeological assessment will be required. No public comments were received for this application. Thank you very much. I understand that the owner, Robert and Kimberly Yonamitsu, are on the line. Do they have anything they wish to add to the report? Uh, no comments. We agree with the uh, Building Council. Thank you very much. Did anyone register in opposition of this application? Uh, no one was registered. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll bring it to committee. Any questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to A5322, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Application A5322 for 642 Rabbit Run Road. Uh, this application seeks uh, relief to reduce the minimum required side yard lots line set back from five meters to 2.6 meters to increase the maximum total lot coverage of accessory structures from 5% to 5.9% and to increase the maximum total lot coverage from 20% to 25.4%. This is in order to permit the construction of a 696 square foot boathouse. We found that this application meets the four tests of the minor variance and recommend it for approval. Uh, we have found that an archaeological assessment is not warranted as their um, wet slip is uh, pre-disturbed. Agency comments received were from ORCA um, advising that they recommend that a planting plan be submitted as well as a sedimentation and erosion control uh, be implemented during construction. Uh, an ORCA permit will be required for the boathouse. Curve Lake First Nation commented that an archaeological assessment is required. Um, however, as mentioned, uh, due to the wet slip being pre-disturbed, the township uh, does not see that that is required um, based on our review. No public comments were received for this application. Thank you very much. I understand the owner, <clears throat> Paul Hutter, is on the line. Is there anything you wish to add to this report? Uh, nothing further to add. Thank you. Thank you very much. Did anyone register in opposition? Uh, no others registered. Thank you very much. I'll bring it to committee. Any questions? Seeing none, I need a motion to Jerry Heron to move it. Donna Ballantyne to second it. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. We have no deferred matters, no correspondence. The minutes of the Committee of Adjustment meeting of September the 27th, 2022. I need someone to move that. Anita? I'll move that. Anita moves it. Andy, would you like to second it? All in favor? Yes. That's carried. And our next meeting is December the 13th, 2022. I need a motion to adjourn. Jerry and Donna, all in favor? Yes. That's carried. Thank you very much. Our council meeting will be beginning. At six. Thank you. <laughs>
Test, test, test. It works for me. I can hear somebody. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Anita. That was Tanya. So we are six o'clock. <clears throat> so we're all set. Okay. Uh, good evening, colleagues. I'm going to call uh, the regular council meeting to order of Tuesday, November the 8th, 2022. And I'll begin by respectfully acknowledging that we are on the treaty and traditional territory of the Mishisagi and Ashbeck. We offer our gratitude to the First Peoples for their care for and teachings about our earth and our relations. May we honor those teachings. And I'm going to ask that we please observe a moment of silence so that council, staff, and members of the public can quietly reflect on our duty to the community that we are trying to serve. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, members of the public, staff, presenters, and members of council, please be advised that meetings are broadcast and recorded and made available on the internet. Is there any declaration of pecuniary interest in the general nature thereof? Madam Clerk, please note that there were none. We will move to the minutes. We have our minutes from October the 11th, 2022. Moved by. Sure. Uh, seconded by Anita? Yes. Okay. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Thank you. Carried. Uh, we'll move, uh, we are going to return to our public meeting at 6.30. Uh, so we will move then on to question period. Was there any questions submitted? No questions. Okay. And then we have no municipal officers and staff reports for direction. And uh, so we will uh, not deal with any of those, obviously. And so we'll go to consent items. Is there any items any member of council would like pulled for discussion? Um, Mr. Chair? Yeah, go, uh, ahead. go ahead. Uh, on, on the correspondence, I guess that's 6A12. Uh, the forecast, uh, yes, okay. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, Donna, you had something? Yes, I have a question about 5A12 and 5B accessibility and correspondence 6A1. 6A10. 1 uh, and 10. Yeah. Okay. And you'd like to speak to one as well. So we've got the two on that. So, okay. So first, we're going to do this in the order of the, uh, of the agenda. So Donna, you wanted to speak to 5A? Yes, thank you. Um, this is Janice's report and it's written under the lame duck um, procedures and it's the Queen Street retrofit. And um, we did get a good grant for part of it, but um, it still is going to be significant money for the remainder. And I was just a little bit confused as to what we anticipate to use this space for. Is it for a business? Or is it for public space to rent, or could it be both? Yeah, so this was the space that we've talked about using in, in, as kind of a business incubator. So the way we would foresee it working is that the chamber would be the leasee in the building, and they would manage that space, and there would be spaces available for rent for folks to come in and use as as they needed um, a meeting space if somebody uh, needed space, just a small meeting space, um, space to uh, to hold a meeting, um, office space, that that sort of thing. So the chamber is going to run the space. They're going to take it over. Yes, that's our plan. There would be continue to be the lease with the chamber for this facility. Yeah. Okay. It's a really good fit with it with um, the chamber. Good. Use. Thank you. Okay. And so 5-2 would be you as well, Donna. Yes. Um, this is to Angie. I'm not sure which part um, 
this was written uh, was written about some of the visits that the accessibility com committee did actually do and i was just wondering would the ennismore secret garden ever be a place that um you would visit for accessibility i know it's kind of in the middle of a forest so not really sure it would be appropriate uh, yep, for sure. The committee would uh, be happy, I'm sure, to do a tour of it. And if they have any recommendations on how to improve the access, I'm, they're always happy to do that. Okay. I'll, we have a committee meeting tomorrow, and I can mention that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, and I believe both Jerry and Donna wanted to talk about number one in the correspondence report. I'll go to Jerry first and then go uh, to uh, to Donna. Thank you. Um, through you, and you could probably answer this question, Mike. It's the the work is looking for their funding, their annual funding again. They they want an increase, but they they've sort of taken some of the roles away from them. Why would we give them an increase, or put it to sorry? Why would they consider that a budget for next term when they've taken some work away from them that they're not necessarily doing, and now they're looking for more money? Well, that seem to make sense. The, the Bill 23, which is suggesting that, is not in force and was not even a public document when this budget was prepared. Uh, all, they, although they've changed the structure and put it into three different buckets about how that was done primarily from a transparency standpoint so people could understand. So there were... Um, they went and Sherry help, help me if I don't, I don't get this right. So bucket one is mandatory services. So these are services that the legislation requires ORCA to do. The second uh, bucket is services that we enter into in, in the form of an agreement where we ask ORCA to do things for us. So for instance, uh, on under the, uh, under the, um, Safe Water Act, not the Safe Water Act, the Source Water Protection Act, the enforcement of that and developing the plans for those. All of the municipalities come together and it's it's somebody at ORCID that does it. Uh, the review of our plans. So when we ask for commenting on whether our plans are consistent with the official plan, when we get all those letters that we're getting for what for our all of that is a, is a second bucket and, and is governed by a second agreement. We've entered into those agreements with ORCA. They didn't really change in substance about what they do. There was a small portion, this is the third bucket, of things that ORCA does or any conservation authority does that is not mandated by the legislation. So in our case, it came out to, in our case being ORCA, it came out to about 3%. And it was primarily education things, planting the trees that, that we do. And in a previous meeting, we agreed that we would have ORCA continue to deliver that on our behalf and other municipalities are making. So it represented about 3% of the total budget. Bottom line is all three of those buckets are continuing to be delivered and they're being and they're, although they're grouped differently, they're essentially the same services that were being delivered before. Now, Bill 23 has subsequently come out. It's entered, uh, it's it's created a sense of uncertainty, but the legislation isn't passed yet, I don't believe. No, it isn't passed yet. And really, we don't know what the ramifications will be. Uh, I guess they could be effective for 23. That would be pretty hard to think somebody could turn on a dime like that. They're probably more likely to be effective. So that's a long winded way of saying they continue to deliver the same services they did before. And then may or may not be taken out at the knees. Depending on what 23. Okay, so I guess next term, um, that's when you guys have to make the decisions once everything's in play. Yeah. Thank Good you. Point. Yes. Don. My question was basically the same. 6A1 was the cost for ORCA to deliver their services, and 6A10 was about Bill 23. And I, like Jerry, thought that they would be delivering less services. 
So why would we agree to pay X number of dollars that they requested? But it, I'm okay with it now that you've explained it. Yeah, and I and I should say to you, should Bill 23 come to being and those services are no longer delivered by ORCA, those services don't disappear. Those services will then have to be delivered directly by the township. So it's important that it's it's not a question of the province relieving somebody from having to do the work. They're simply going to say, you now have to do them in-house. And so I'm looking at Robert and Pear because they would be the two individuals who would have to deliver a lot more of what they're what they're doing. So you could be in a situation, and again, this will be up to the new council to keep a close watch on, that the cost of delivering the service directly could be greater because uh, in the case of the uh, conservation authority, they may have one person with the expertise that could service eight municipalities. If they're no longer able to do it, those eight municipalities are going to have to hire eight experts. So anyways, that is for the new council to keep a close watch on. Yes, Sherry. Unintended consequences. I'd like to add one thing to, to poll. Yep. 8B. B? Yeah. 5B? 8B. 8B. Oh, sorry. Uh, oh, the uh, police service report. Okay. Uh, okay, so we, we've gotten through that. Uh, Bill 23, so we've gotten through that. So we'll do 8B, and then I'll go to, uh, then I'll go to Anita to talk to, uh, to 12. Okay. Um, actually, she was, wasn't she correspondence? Six. Yes. Yeah, okay. So she should do it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. And, and so I, um, just, just really briefly, I, uh, again, I appreciate the support and um, comfort that I've re received since the uh, death of my daughter. And thank you to the township for making do a donation to forecast in Naomi's memory. It means a lot. Thank you, Anita. Okay, and so that would take us then to-, to Thank you. Yeah. Through you, um, I'm just wondering, I know that we passed um, a motion and that we bought one of the um, speed awareness boards. And um, I, would, I would ask our member of the police services board for Smith and Ennismore to let us know um, what kind of reports we've been getting out of the one we already bought. Okay. Um, I have an explanation of why we've decided to ask for another one right now. And I can answer the, in short, your question that we've only had We've just recently purchased the speed awareness board and it's only been in two locations, two locations on Gifford. And they determined that they put it in the wrong place because it was on a bend. So we didn't get good results because you obviously have to slow down on a bend. So then we put it for another two weeks in another spot on Gifford and we haven't had a meeting to hear those results. And it now should be on Woodland. Is that correct, Tanya? Has it been installed yet? It's being, it'll be installed next week on, on Woodland. Okay. And I'll give you the rationale for why the Police Services Board is requesting $7,000 for another one in the 2023 budget. Um, we followed the proper protocol asking public works if they could handle two separate installations and the answer was yes the black cat gives us data about where speeding occurs so when we install the speed awareness board that's um, a method of trying to educate and change the habits of the drivers on those roads that the black cat indicates is a problem and um, we 
statistics have shown that we should really, at a minimum, have a speed awareness board up for a month to try and educate and change driving habits. Um, ideally, longer than a month, but a month is certainly better than a couple of weeks. So that's why with such a large area, we could only really do 12 roads a year with one speed awareness board. So if we had a second, we could do 24 roads and possibly leave it in really problem areas for a longer period of time. And also it was a little bit um, like normally we probably would have waited until next year, but there's uncertainty about when the police services board changes to one for the whole county. Um, we aren't, weren't really sure that we would be able to make a request for um, something individual. It would probably have to come from council and council might not be as in tune to these issues as the police services board was. So we we decided to fast track it a little bit so that we would have access to it and be able to make really good use of the two of them. So that was the reasoning for it. <clears throat> okay, I understand your rationale, but um, we haven't really got results from the first one. And here we're talking about buying another one. I just feel a little um, leery about putting that kind of thing in the budget. Um, having been on the police services board for many years, we never spent that kind of money. Like it's it's uh, quite a bit. And um, I just don't know if it's warranted at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, through you. Um, sort of uh, what Sherry had said there, you know, it's been up for two weeks, we have no data. You know, it was in the wrong spot. Now it's in the right spot. You know, we don't know anything about it. We, we want to. We were supposed to be getting black cat reports, I think, on a monthly basis or every two months. We were supposed to get the stats. We were for a little bit, and then we haven't got this black cat. Has black cat even been out? Yes, the blackout uh, black cat is out regularly. It's actually out right now um, in the municipality, and it's it, it's generally out every two weeks. Every two yeah. weeks. It's on there for two weeks. Generally, yeah. All right. So these high score boards, as I call them, there you try and see get the world record for as fast you can go on those streets. I don't like them. I think eventually, the like you said statistics show that um, after a month, people become, um, you know, it it it's effective. I think after a month, you become numb to it. And, and you don't see it. If you come around the corner once, you see it on Fairburn all the time, uh, coming up the hill, bing, you know, oh, geez, got me. Um, I, I, I think the cops know where the speeding is if they spend any time around here. I'm sure the members on the police board, um, services board, if they drive around the township enough, they know where everybody's speeding. Um, and then they could maybe, you know, verbally um, mention um, to it. But as far as spending seven grand on another sign, when we don't even know if this thing is working or whether there's a speeding issue, we've all seen the black cat results where speeding is not an issue, it is not an issue in this township. So I don't know why we'd waste money. Um, and I get it, not, I shouldn't say waste, spend money on something that may not be warranted is, is my dilemma. Again, the black cat's proven time and time again that we don't have a speeding issue. In fact, we got a too slow of an issue. Um, the drivers. Well, that's not like a hundred percent true, but um, I think it will be up to the next council to make that decision. But I believe that the police services board have the rationale to make the request, and it certainly can be turned down if um, council decides to, and if you can't afford the seven thousand dollars. Yeah. So I, I think the suggestion from Donna, and I, I think there's some value to this, that this ca this council will be silent on the merit of that, and it will leave it to the next council to make a decision as to what they want to do. So we be clear, we're being silent. We're neither supporting nor rejecting that. We're simply passing it on to our successors to, to deal with it. Is everybody comfortable with that? Yes, that's, that's good for me. Yeah. Pardon? So 
I'm sorry, Anita, go ahead. I'm, I said, see. yeah, that, that works for me. Yeah. Okay. So does that recommendation get pulled? Oh? I'm trying to, the counseling system recommends that, well, the police service board is still the one recommending, so they can recommend in the capital and for secondary speed awareness board and the necessary mounting equipment at the December 8th special. Uh, so why did you even come to us? Well, yeah, I, it should really, what, what this council is saying, that'll be up to the new council to decide whether they want to entertain that. So the recommendation is, is the police services board recommendation. We're not accepting that recommendation. We're simply sending it off to the new council to dispose of that item. That's not what this says. If, if we pass the consent items, we're recommending it. I'm just I'm trying to read it for standard speed awareness and the necessary management that the Smith that go to the budget. That's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, that, that is correct. So this council's recommending that this matter be considered at this special council meeting on December the 8th. So yes. Okay. But okay. I, I I'm sorry, I'm having difficulty because it to me like we're splitting hairs. What we're we're all in agreement, and I'll take the clerk to word it in whatever way she wants to, is that this item will get dealt with by the next council, not this one. I don't see in passing this resolution that we're agreeing to that expenditure. But if you want to make it clear that this council it, the position is that the next council should make a decision about this budget item, is that that's what we're saying. And if we can put that right in the motion, if that's clear. We defer the recommendation to the next council. We, we well, could do it. We could use those words, but it's saying the same thing. It's it's saying exactly that. This council's not approving the expenditure, but in order for us to advance this as a recommendation from the police services board and have it included as part of the draft budget, we need we need that direction. So the, the new council on December the 8th can decide it doesn't want to include this in the capital budget if they wish to. If you defer it, our next regular council meeting is December the 13th. So we can't include it as part of the discussion for the December 8th special meeting. So effectively by deferring it, this council's turned it down. Okay. Somebody want to second the deferral, which basically means it won't get dealt with in the budget. I'll second it. Okay. I I would move the recommendation. Well, we have to dispose of this first. Okay. Okay. I vote in favor of the deferral. Okay. What Don, did she say? She votes in favor of the deferral. I'm assuming the mover and the second are due as well, right? In favor? Put your hand up. Yes. Okay. So that, that is deferred. Okay. Okay. So that uh, then we need a motion to accept the balance of the of consent items. Jerry, Donna, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. Yeah. So that takes care of everything. Then we have, because there's still a couple of minutes beforehand, uh, uh, the requests for Roma delegations are due before the new council meets. So, um, I think this council may, because you can always, we can always make a request and the new council can always withdraw it, right? So, it's not like we're tying the hat. What do you mean? No, but whatever we suggest, yeah. the, the new council can say, never mind. Right? So, yeah. right? I'm correct on that. So we can suggest anything. And if the new council says, well, that's nuts, we don't want to do that, they'll simply say, by the way, uh, we've withdrawn that request. So nothing we do will tie the hands of the future council. So does anybody have any suggestions about the yes, SDR? I think we got to go to the well again on long term care, don't we? Okay. Yeah, long term care, that's affordable housing. Long term care, affordable housing. Anything else? Uh, I think healthcare, uh, fast tracking of uh, medical personnel like uh, PSWs or foreign trained 
medical personnel, whether that's something we can do at the local level, or I know the province is sort of working towards that, but whether or not that's something that we should try to, that the, the new council should try to make a delegation with regards to, yeah, medical personnel. Okay, the hiring of, of medical personnel. Um, anybody have anything else? The only one I've suggested is the new council may want to talk to the government about 23, right? What, what was that? Bill 23, that's oh, yeah. the, that's the, all the changes to planning. Okay, yeah. Right, including changes to development fees, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we talked about a small portion of it today, which was the conservation authorities, but there's a whole host of items in there. And so, um that can go forward but i might suggest that in the council meeting of december the 13th if i have the date right you it might be in order madam mayor I'm about to be madam mayor to have that come back as a report to the new council saying this is what the old council said what do you yeah. think because I, I i think at the end of the day the new council's got to make up its own mind what it wants to talk to the government about and i don't I don't, I don't feel comfortable suggesting to the new council what they should, what it, they should it, do. It'll be noted in the minutes, too, so it can come up through that okay. means. Yep. Yeah. Okay, just so long as the new council gets an opportunity to say, no, we don't want to do this. And, and I guess they could always make a late request and see if the government's willing to, to do something that we haven't brought forward. So. Yep. It's just lately when we've been asking for delegations, we're not getting them. Yeah, so. <clears throat> well, you may be more successful, Madam Madam Mayor. Okay, so we have those four that have been noted. Okay, good. Uh, do you need a motion to that effect? Okay. Um, Donna, Anita? Yes. All those in favor? Yes. Okay. Okay, we are very close to our time, uh, so uh, we can't do the bylaw until we do the public meeting. So I think we've exhausted the agenda. It is six twenty-seven, so we'll just take a we'll just pause for a couple of minutes and start right at six thirty. And we're going to go, colleagues. We're going to item two. I could get through my portfolio. You wanted to do that. Okay, one. sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I only have two things because I already discussed the police services board one. So the link total year to date, Route 31, 3055, Route 32, 1414, total 5,463. So the ridership is definitely coming up. And the library, we have completed both our operational and capital budgets. And that's all. I've already talked about the police services board. Good. Sherry. Overstock liquidation has moved from their uh, previous location at the Fork in the Road and are now in the old giant tagger location which is better because there's more parking the building's bigger and uh looks a lot better inside that building than it did where it was before so that's a good thing and that's it for me good jerry yeah just trying to find my text here um the, the public works guys are working on the ninth line they're getting the winter sand and everything ready to go um, and then Mike texted me my report and I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Um, uh, no, I don't have it. I'll have to find it. No, okay. I, uh, I don't have anything to report on. So the only uh, thing I'd really like to at this point um, report on is with regards to this, uh, Legion Week. Um, so there was the Indig Indigenous um, Remembrance Day, our week, um, and also then all the, the Remembered Day services this week. Uh, so hopefully, I personally can't go because I have COVID, but I think it's important that we do honor and respect our veterans and our uh, people who have served in the forces, those who came home and those who didn't. 
Thank you. Tom, I'm gonna... Oh, go ahead. Um, I'll just cut it close here. Um, the arenas are fully running at full schedule. It's all busy. And Mike and I were talking the other day, and the, the we've got hall rentals, the highest numbers in seven years. Um, that's how healthy things are right now is they're getting rented more. Um, so that, that was good news. Yeah, excellent. Okay, Donna. I, I could just add one other thing about rec. Um, on, um, forget the date now, seems to be it might have been October, the day before the election, the 23rd. We had the 50th anniversary celebration for the Ennismore Community Center. We had an excellent turnout of people and um, a really good celebration. And the people were really appreciative of uh, what the township did to um, remember 50 years ago when they came together to build the community center. Excellent. Well done, Donna. Well done. Okay. Uh, it being 6.30, I'm going to ask our planner to announce the public meeting and the purpose thereof. Thank you, Your Worship. The Township of Selwyn is holding a public e meeting tonight to consider an application to amend the zoning bylaw for the Township of Selwyn in accordance with Section 34 of the Planning Act. Prescribed notice of public meeting was provided by prepaid first-class mail to all residents within a 120-meter radius of the property subject to the application, as well as by way of, of a sign posted on the property. The notice was provided via an email to the prescribed ministries and agencies. The notice is available on the township's website. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the township of Selwyn before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the council to the township. The sealed appeal the decision of the council, the township to the Ontario Land Tribunal, nor can a person or public body be added to a, as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. The zoning amendment before us today is in regard to uh, 2225 Northeast Road, which is part lot 28, concession 12 in the Smith Ward. This is a, uh, a zoning amendment uh, subsequent to uh, a, a consent application that's been given provisional consent. At, through the County of Peterborough Land Division Committee, uh, County File Number B5-22. Um, the, the subject property is, is designated rural and the subject lands are zoned rural and environmental protection. The severed parcel in question is zoned rural at the present time. Uh, so the, 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 pro the proposed severed parcel is 0 .1, 0 0.91 hectares or plus or minus 2.3 acres with a lot frontage of 88.15 or 289.2 feet. Um, and, and that size of lot uh, doesn't meet the lot area and frontage requirements of the rural zone. So this zoning amendment is, is necessary to address that. The other additional component to the zoning amendment is the northwest corner of the property is being zoned to rezone to development D zone in order to recognize a um, and a minimum distance separation arc that slightly overlaps into this property where development will not be permitted to occur. Uh, leaves the balance of the property uh, available for development. Um, and so there would be more, more than sufficient land to allow for a, a building envelope on that property within the balance of the lands that will be zoned rural residential. I, I find that the application um, conforms to the township and county official plans, as well as the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe and is consistent with the provincial policy statement. I do recommend this uh, zoning amendment for approval. Uh, in terms of comments, uh, ministry or agency comments, we've, we've received comments of no concern from the court, the Pine Ridge District School Board, the Autonomy Region Conservation Authority and, and Bridge Gas. And those are my comments in relation to this application. Uh, thank you very much, Bear. So do we have anybody online who is wanting to speak in favor of this application? I believe that um, Diana Kay from DM Wills is on the line. Diana, did you want to add something? That is correct. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, through you. Good evening, Council and, and everyone in the Council Chambers uh, this evening. I am just here to indicate that I've reviewed staff's report. I concur with the recommendation put forward by Mr. Lundberg and respectfully also request that the application be approved. And I'm also available to answer any questions from members of council. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in favor? No? Is there anybody registered who is opposed? 
Okay, hearing that, I will turn it over to council. Are there any questions from council? Did not see any questions from council. Would somebody like to move? Let me adopt it. Jerry, seconded by Sherry. All those in favor? Yes. That is carried. Thank you, Pear. And uh, the one last item then of business that we have before we move into close. No, sorry. Yeah, if, no, sorry. I've got two pieces of business. But myself can choose. Let us do the bylaws first, and then I'm going to go to other business. So we have the bylaw, which is what we just dealt with. In, in the form of a motion, we need a bylaw to bring that into force, right? I'll move, I'll, I'll move that, Mr. Chair. It's Anita. Okay, Anita has moved it. Jerry will second it. All those in favor? Yes. Okay, okay. and we're going to wait on the confirming bylaw, and I'm going to go to uh, uh, other business. So as, uh, as everybody in this room is aware, and I suspect the public is aware, this is the concluding meeting of this term of council. And uh, I was uh, my intent to give all of my colleagues an opportunity to perhaps say uh, some closing words if that's what they would like to do. And I'm going to start on my far right and move across. And I'm going to go to the screen. And then I'm going to come to myself. So, Donna. Thank you very much. Mic on. Ennis Moore has always had a strong council protecting the interests of their ratepayers. My position has been different being the first Ennis Moore ward councillor since full amalgamation. Although my position has been slightly different from those in the past, I have always been cognizant of making decisions that were in the best interest of the entire municipality while giving my main focus to my ward. Ennismore is a close-knit community with a strong work ethic and a giving spirit to maintain their peace of paradise. Many of the people have lived there their entire life, my husband included. This is not just a place to live. It's an old-fashioned community where people show up for one another, no matter the cause. I feel that I have represented with honesty and integrity and have always gone the second mile to help members of our entire community. Please don't forget Annis Moore as you move forward. They deserve as much recognition as the other wards. Thanks for all the memories, both good and stressful. I believe that I'm a better person because of my 20 years of council experience. Also, thanks to staff for their support and wisdom, and to my fellow councillors who were always there to listen and to lend a helping hand when needed. Good luck to Sherry, whom we're leaving behind, and to Anita, Jerry, and Andy, good luck in your future endeavours. We had a great run and accomplished a lot for the community. <clears throat> it's the end of a term <clears throat> and what a term it was there are many challenges including a worldwide pandemic where everyone had to pivot and pivot again to keep up with constant changes and rules and making sound decisions some very difficult at times thank you to our greatest asset and So when our staff through and you're all and you always go the extra mile and to our council for navigating those challenges. It's the end of an era. All of you are moving on. And I want to say it has been an honor and pleasure to serve on council with you all. As one of my old Irish ancestors would have said, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun warm your face, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you for everything you have done for this township and your years of service, and I wish you and your families all the best in your next chapter. Andy and Donna, I hope your retirement is better than even you dream it will be. Jerry and Anita, Godspeed. Take the time to smell the roses once in a while.
I'll miss you all at the council table, and I wish you all health and happiness. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry. They were a lot nicer than I'm going to be. I got some axes to grind here. <laughs> this has been an awesome opportunity. Um, the confidence in the voters um, was truly humbling. It's probably about the uh, second greatest honor I've had besides marrying um, old lucky jolly old Saint Nick. That would be the number one honor. Um, you guys have been great to work with. It's been one hell of a ride. Um, we didn't always agree. Um, and we didn't agree with staff all the time either, um, but we were always respectful. And uh, contrary to some, um, I believe we did a good job. Um, in fact, um, Sherry and I were talking one day about the major issues coming up in the election. And she, I said, what, what are the major issues? And she said, she took 10 or 15 seconds. She couldn't figure anything out. And I said, exactly. We've done a good job. There are no burning issues. There's no pitchforks and torches out there. So between staff and council, I think we 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 nailed it. Um, our staff have uh, been fantastic to deal with. I'm not going to lie to you. When I came in here, I had a preconceived notion that it was pretty much lollipops, paper airplanes, and good times, throw the feet up. I mean, how hard can it be to run this township? Well, it takes a little bit more work than people, people know, and I thank you. Janice, you've got a good team here. Um, your commitment to the township um, is unwavering. The decisions you make, whether or not we agree with them or whether the public agrees with them, I firmly believe that based on the circumstance, the information you have, and in your opinion, you're always pulling for the best decision that you believe is correct for the township. So thank you. Um, somebody asked me once during the eight years what I'm most proud of. I said, I'm not worried about individual accomplishments. I'm more worried about a team. And as a team, we did great. However, I did think about it for a little bit, and I came up with two things I'm pretty proud of. <clears throat> One, <laughs> being the undisputed heavyweight champion of Selwyn Township with a record of 2-0 and o against the Integrity Commissioner. I'm very, very, very proud of that, and I'm hoping that somebody might be able to try and beat that record. The other thing, too, is I didn't, I didn't turn into one of those syrupy, phony politicians. I'm the same so-and-so I was when I walked in the door here. Blunt, unpolitically correct. You, you know where you stand with me. Um, speaking of which, uh, Andy and I had a lot of conversations, and um, he'd always say, Heron, well, where do you stand? You got to – don't sugarcoat it, you know. And after a profane-laced conversation, and Andy might have learned some new words. Speaking of Andy, after 53 years, 53 years of public service, he's quitting. Um, and just for reference, I'm 51 years old, and you're finishing off 50. Three, that's a lot of rubber chicken dinners, boring meetings, boring people, and just plain tiring. You, you might deserve a medal for that one, old boy. Um, and I had a thing about my haters, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, and finally, it's a shame that uh, Lane says, isn't here tonight. Um, as he kept asking how many meetings I had left for like a year, every single thing, how many more you got? And I, I thought he was, you know, going to miss me. It turns out he had a countdown going so I didn't think that was very nice of him and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the glue that held me together here at the township Tanya Goncalves Goncalves however I say that thing anyway she was the glue that held me together she got me ready for all my meetings with the committees and was just awesome you've got an ace in the hole there Janice finally I wish you all peace I wish you all love but most importantly I wish you all flip-flops thank you Jerry I need it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, our final reports to council. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to attend in person tonight. That, that COVID finally hit our household. It was interesting and surprising, actually, because it manifested itself as a uh, just my regular seasonal allergies. So it took me actually about three days and a little bit of Googling to actually think that maybe I should test myself. And damn it all, it came back positive. So Anyway, I was really surprised about that. So first of all, thank you to our residents and constituents for their support over the years. It has been a blessing to get to know many of you personally, and I'm talking to all our residents across the township personally, and to support your efforts to make our township the, the best place to live. Selwyn Township is such a, spe is a special place. To my council colleagues for the past 16 years, thank you. It has been a fulfilling and rewarding time for me and I, was, and I hope that I was able to play an important role in the development and furtherance of our township. 
Certainly there were challenges and some difficult decisions to make over the years, but overall it has been a re rewarding experience. To all of our staff, both current and former, I send out a huge thank. Thanks, you have always been professional and provided appropriate re recommendations with accurate and complete background information in your reports. Your wise counsel over the years has been very much appre appreciated. Our various department heads and support staff have done a tremendous job, and it is my hope that the new council will continue to support and rely on them as you move forward with your work for the township. To our fire department personnel and first responders, thank you for your commitment to the protection of our people. I know there are situations where not only are the people who are directly impacted, but our personnel as well are in harm's way. Thank you for protecting our residents and visitors. To the Lakefield Zone police officers, thank you for keeping our community safe. Prior to COVID, I was able to attend police service board meetings in person as the council liaison. To all of our Peterborough police service personnel and board members, thank you. Um, I am gonna do a specific talk about a few departments. To our library staff and board, you have shown great resilience and creativity during the COVID years and to current day. Some really great programs and initiatives have come to fruition and you are to be commended. To the, various, to the members of various committees, both council and ad hoc that I've been on over the years, thank you. Being a member of the Accessibility Advisory Committee and the Municipal Heritage C Committee, it's been a, ple a pleasure and I believe we've done a great job. Our Accessibility Advisory Committee has provided advice to council to help make public services and facilities accessible to everyone responding to and making appropriate recommendations on behalf of the members of our disabled community is very important. And I trust that the new committee will continue to work on behalf of those who require our special attention and a special thanks to our support staff who at the, both the county and the township level. Our heritage committee has played an important role ensuring that our special places and spaces are honored and preserved. We were able to place many properties on the heritage register over the years as well as identifying those structures that needed special protection through designation. Our township is a trailblazer when it comes to sustainability. Many projects and initiatives over the years recommended by staff and supported by council have seen our municipality be front runners in many sustainable uh, initiatives. Keep up the good work. Uh, many thanks to all the volunteers and staff with, in, with regards to culture, who have organized special events such as the Literary Festival, Shamrock Festival, Jazz Festival, and others. Our partnership with Curve Lake First Nation has been and continues to be very important. Continue doing things that celebrate and honor our culture. Thank you. Thank you to our various seniors groups that are active in our community. It is my hope that you as council and that the new council and staff will continue to support our seniors, whether through their groups or advocating for accessible and affordable housing, healthcare, long-term care, and other activities necessary to see them thrive. During this important week of remembrance, we will never forget the brave men and women in our armed forces through various conflicts for, the, for their service and to those who made the ultimate sacrifice. We thank them for keeping our nation strong and free. So once again, I thank you for the many years of working together with my council colleagues and staff. God bless and I wish everyone, I offer best wishes uh, to everyone in this upcoming new term of council. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anita. Uh, I'm going to say a couple of uh, of things, and uh, and then I'm going to turn it over to to, uh, to to Janice to say a couple of things as well. So the first thing I want to do is is some thank yous, and I want to start by thanking the residents of Selwyn, because without their permission. Uh, I wouldn't have been given the opportunity to serve. So uh, to each and every one out there, uh, thank you. You've been a great, uh, you are uh, a great community. And I've uh, I've appreciated the privilege uh, to serve in this role. I want to thank my, uh, my colleagues. Uh, you're all very different folks, but collectively, I think we've made a, a, a good team. And, and Donna? 20 years it's a generation that you've been on this council and and, and guided uh this council and, and served your community and it follows uh, uh generations of contributing through your educational uh career uh you've affected a lot of lives 
in your community uh, for the good. And uh, I know you are, and you should be proud of everything that you've done. And uh, I've appreciated every moment I've had to work with you. And Anita, you've been 16 years uh, representing Lakefield. Uh, and I've always found in my time working with you that that those deep roots that you have in the community, uh, that you were always able to speak to that. And you were always able to give me a perspective that as a relative newcomer, I could not have on my own. Um, you were uh, down to earth, straightforward, and always willing to share your knowledge and wisdom with me. And I thank you for that. And Jerry, you've been eight years on council. And I'll say publicly what I've often said to you privately. Uh, we may not always agree, but you always had a perspective that was held by lots of folks. And you were never afraid to, to, to say that. And I, and I think that's valuable in, in the world that, that we're in, uh, that, uh, that we have a chance to hear different perspectives on this council. And I think that was uh, that was important. I've 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 enjoyed working with you, uh, and we have sparred back and forth at times. But I've 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 thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, you've made a you've made a contribution to uh, to not just the community of Smith, but to the whole uh, uh, Selwyn Township. And Sherry, to you, we're passing the torch, and uh, you will be leading a new council. Uh, you've served on municipal council, uh, well, you go back on this council to 2006, I believe, right? And then you were on Pickering Council for a number of years. And so the township is going to be well served by somebody with lots of experience in, in what they do. You've been a great uh, deputy mayor to me. Always, uh, always, You've always had my back. You've always been there to help. Uh, you told me when you thought I may have done it a different way, which was which was always important to hear. Uh, I've been proud to serve with you. I've enjoyed it, and I will be watching with great interest as you as you move forward with your new colleagues and and deal with with what is going to be some significant issues that we're going to have to we're going to have to work through. But I have every confidence in. You. I have every confidence in you, and I believe the township will be well served under your stewardship. I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank my family as well. Uh, as Jerry so politely put, uh, I've been more than half a century uh, in, in the workforce. Uh, the public service part of it has been mostly the last 30 years. Uh, but uh, I am retiring. There's lots of people that don't believe that that actually is going to happen, not the least of which is my family. But uh, I do want to thank uh, my my children, my five kids. They've often in that period of time gone with an absent dad. And sometimes they've been in a spotlight that they would have preferred not to have been in simply because they're my, my, my child. That's not an easy place to be. They've always been very supportive. I love them dearly. And, uh, and and thank them for, for, for putting up with me. And I also want to thank my wife. Uh, I got to say, her, her love sustains me. Her wisdom guides me. And her honesty grounds me. And all three of those things are important. Uh, and uh, she's been, I don't know how she's been able to deal with the, with all of the, uh, all of that, but but she has, and, and I love her dearly for it. Um, you know, Jerry started to talk a little bit about our accomplishments, and Anita did too, and and, uh, and 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 Donna did, and 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 we have got some things done. There's, you know, I, I I look at some of the infrastructure things, projects during our term on council, the causeways being rehabilitated. Uh, we did those CIP improvements up in Young's Point. I don't think we should forget about that. It happened, ended right in the middle of COVID. We're in the middle of getting Water Street done after many years of wanting to get that project off the ground. It's actually happening. Uh, you know, we've got some new facilities, the maker space from the library. That is really leading edge for a community. And to see that happening in a, in a community our size, I think is really special. 
But the thing that I, I think I'll most remember about our council was the COVID recovery plan that uh, that we came together with, right? It was at a time when, 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 when our community was reeling and members of our business community, members from our not-for-profit sector and our citizens in general were just reeling, not, not knowing what the future would bring. And I was very proud of council, very proud of staff who, uh, who brought us together to come up with that recovery program. And, uh, and I think it served our residents, uh, I think it served our, our residents well. Uh, I wanna also thank our staff. Uh, these past four years have been difficult. They really have been difficult. And through it all, you've demonstrated flexibility, nimbleness, and an ability to get things done. And I think I, I, I talk for all of us when I can say that uh, you made our jobs easier because of the because of what you did. And uh, you know, Jerry, you were very eloquent in in, in, in talking about uh, the staff's absolute commitment to our community. And uh, it, it, it always try to make decisions that, that were gonna work for the township and for the people in the township. And uh, I've come to, to, to appreciate that even more than I appreciated it before I took this job. Um, so I'm about to leave the stage. Uh, come, there's no surprise, but i leaving the stage, exit stage left, right, for me. Uh, but I will be leaving the, the public stage. Not that I won't be doing things, but uh, they'll be very different. So uh, Sherry has heard this because I said it at County Council, but I'm going to repeat it here. Uh, I have a couple of reflections to make after half a, year, half a century. Half a century. I think it was half a year, but it's been half a century. Uh, and the, and the first one is, is is fairly straightforward. And I I thought about some of these things for a little while. So, first sort of lesson that I learned is being the smartest person in the room is no guarantee of success. However, being the hardest working person in the room often is. And so I think that's something to to live by. And second. When faced with life decisions and uncertainty, never be afraid to go through the unopened door. I have found in life that we are we far more often regret the things we didn't do than the things that we did. And finally, I could implore everybody, never give up on love. If you are fortunate to find it, cherish it. Nurture it. Hold people close to you. For at the end of the day, and at our individual end, it will be how we loved that we will want to be remembered for. So to everybody here in the chambers and who are watching, thank you. Stay safe. Be well. And in all things, be kind. Thank you. Everybody. Beautiful. So uh, with that, we will now entertain a motion to go into close. Oops. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yes, Janice, I, my, I'm a little emotional and getting a little bit. Mixed. That's okay. I know you're tired of listening to me after all these years. <laughs> anyway, on behalf of staff, I would just like to uh, obviously extend our, our appreciation to council for all of their hard work and, and their support over the last four years. Um, it's always a challenging environment at, in the municipal level. We've got uh, continuously growing expectations and demands. We have limited resources. We have constantly changing rules and, and regulations from the province. So it's a really challenging environment. Um, this past term, as has been mentioned, even more so, we had a pandemic, we had a direco. We, we kind of had the perfect storm that, uh, that we endured. Um, but I'd say looking back, as we always do at the end of every term, um, we did more than survive that. We, we thrived through that. Um, and we, we uh, had a lot of great achievements over that time. So I think that's really a testament to the dedication and the hard work of everybody in this organization, from um, our council members to our management team, to our staff who are in operations and, and customer service uh, representing us on the front lines every, every day. So um, I think that really demonstrates that when you work together, uh, you can get a lot done regardless of the circumstances. It's not perfect, but we make it work and uh, and we get things done. 
And I, I appreciate the comments and the recognition that you've all given to our management team and our staff, because we truly do have a great team of people here. I'm proud and very thankful to be part of it. And certainly thank them all for their contribution as well. Um, we're, we're losing four of you. So to those of you who are leaving us, uh, we will miss your knowledge and your experience. We'll miss your perspectives and at times the levity that you've brought to the table. Um, we'll miss you adjourning every meeting, Jerry. Um, so um, we do appreciate your contribution because it's a hard role. Uh, it's a, you know, we can never make everybody happy. So it, it's a very hard and challenging role. And I, and I think you've all um, dedicated yourself to it very well over the last four years. Um, we wish you all the very best as you move on to your next next chapters. And I really hope you're moving on knowing that you've um, served your community very well um, over your last, uh, for many, many years on council. Um, to Sherry, uh, we're taking you along with us. You're, you're taking on the challenge of, of mayor. Um, and we certainly do look forward to continuing to work with you. Um, and we await all the challenges and opportunities that are gonna come before us in the next four years as well. So again, um, thanks to everyone. Uh, we do have a small token of appreciation for the four of you who are, are leaving. Um, so maybe, uh, I know Anita, you have yours already delivered. So I think you probably have it in hand. And maybe Angie and Tanya and I can each deliver one to the folks at the table. Yeah, yes, you can steal that as well. Um, and then maybe once you have your, your gifts, we could kind of gather around the, around the TV screen and, and get a picture of council, including <laughs> Anita uh, on the screen. So thank you. Say cheese, Anita. There we go. <laughs> We're good. Just what? Uh, are we done? Thanks, Anita. You're good.
Uh, I think actually Donna wanted to suggest one other thing and then. Um... I guess um, I think we all received a really nice and complimentary email from Mike Goble mm -hmm. and he's moving on and he will not be our um, training officer for our fire department. So I think it would be really nice if we sent him a letter in return from council. It's a good idea. I think that's a wonderful idea. So should we pass a motion to that effect? Or? Sure. Yeah, Donna will move that and Gary will second that. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay, so, so if we want to do, uh, we'll do the confirming bylaw after. Okay, so a motion session. to go and a close. Gary, Gary, all those in favor? Yes. Okay. And so what, are we going to go in the other room and then yeah. we'll, ca we'll call you Anita uh, uh, on a conference call. Okay. Call uh, you. Okay, I'm going to stop my video. I'm going to yep. mute.